Now, before I start explaining to you guys the folders and the files that Laravel 5 uses, I want to open my CMD and uh, we can now find out if the installation actually has been uh, successfully completed. So what I will do is to move to my desktop, so CD desktop, CD tutorials, and now I can move to the uh, newly created folder, which is CD Laravel 5. At this point, all we have to say is php artisan serve, and this command will run uh, Laravel 5, and this is the URL that you have to follow in order to see the result. So we are using port 8000 for this uh, example. So if I go to my browser and I go to localhost 8000, you can see now the result which is Laravel 5 and all this means is that Laravel 5 has been completed successfully. So what it means, it, ha it means that we have to uh, continue now with the folders of Laravel 5. So uh, I will open Sublime Text and I will go to File, Open Folder and at this point if you go to your desktop and then you go to Tutorials you then have to go to Laravel 5, which is the name of the project, and you have to click Select Folder. By doing that now, you have a, at the left side of the Sublime Text, you have a panel, which is a tree, tree structure with all the folders and the files that exist uh, in that pro, uh, folder. So I will start explaining what this env.env file is. So by taking a look to our .env file, you can see that, uh, for example, uh, it stores uh, the host name, the database name, the username, the password. So, as you can imagine, this is a file when you can store uh, key pair values for uh, different settings. So, instead of passing my database credentials directly to the code, you can have a file like this one, which is .env, and here now you can use, you can store uh, you can pass your passwords, your emails, API keys, everything related to secret data that you do not want to expose in any kind of case. And then in, uh, within your code, you can access these uh, variables and you can use uh, the values that they have without, though, seeing the values. So the values are only seen at this file here, .env, and this is where you set them. Now the .env.example file, uh, well, this is not an official file that the user needs in order to, uh, in order, in order for the project to work. So what this file does is, for example, as you can see here, we have an API, an app key, and the app key is this string, right? So this is the app key for my Laravel 5 application. Now, if you go to the .env.example, you can see that this is just, you know, it, it is, it says some meaningless uh, uh, st stuff. I mean, it just says, some random string. It doesn't say any kind of number or any kind of text, whatever. So this is just random, okay? So this is just for testing, we can say. This is just an example. So I could also go here and say, uh, just uh, just type your app key here, dude. Okay, so this is the only thing that you have to do. For example, so what it means is that this file is not even needed. So this is only to uh, when you give the application to someone, so they know what to say, what to use uh, in the .env file. So this is the only purpose of .env.example file. So I will delete that. And now I will go and talk about git. So we have git attributes and git ignore. So if you're not going to use git uh, in your development, then you do not have to even consider these two files. However, I want to explain these two files, so I will start with git attributes. So, uh, the git attrib .git attributes, what it does is this. Uh, well, let's say that we are 10 people working on this Laravel 5 project, and each of us uh, uses a different operating system. So, I'm, I might use Windows 10, the other guy might use Ubuntu, the other one might use Mac, uh, and so, etc. So, every single one of us is using a different operating system. So what this git attribute uh, file does is to make sure that there is no problem uh, with, uh, you know, there is no crash and also all the settings are correct regarding the operating system.
Now, what about this git ignore? So uh, here now you can specify files and folders that you do not want uh, to be included in the repository. Uh, for example, as you can see, the first, the, the last file that we have here, and the only file I think, is this one, dot env. Oh, sorry, uh, we have three files. However, this file here, dot env, is this file that we have right here. So when we push something, we do not want this file to be included, okay? Because this file now has, as you can see, a lot of secret information, and we do not want to push, to push this file to our uh, repository. Otherwise, the users might find the, uh, for example, the credentials to log to the server and get the database and all that stuff. Now, the next file is this artisan file. So, what the hell is this artisan file? Uh, so, this artisan file, we can say that it does some initializations. However, you're not, you're never going to change this, so there is no uh, need you know to know more about this file because this is a file that Laravel uses for each framework So there is no need to learn about this and what it does because you're never gonna change this file so We can now com continue with the composer.json So this file is needed in order to use composer you cannot use composer without this file so what this file does um, is to uh, is to describe uh, the dependencies that your project has and uh, for example if you go to the to uh, this line at line 7 you can see require so what this require means it means that all these dependencies here for example PHP and Laravel framework are dependencies that your project is actually based on okay and it it really needs them in order to uh, to work in order to run while these files here, so we require the dev, you can see all the dependencies that are used just for testing. So these are not required for uh, our project to run. This is only just for development. And you can actually search for Composer uh, on Google and see uh, and have a better look uh, at, that, uh, at that file, that component. Now we can move on with composer.log. So this file now contains information about uh, the composer that is currently installed on your system. However, you will never, never touch this file, so there is no need to learn something else about this. So the only thing that you have to learn is that this file is used to describe the composer, the version of the composer that is, that is installed on your system. So I will move uh, to gulpfile.js. Now, this file is used for CSS and JavaScript, and this is for a new feature that Laravel has added, which is called Elixir, and we will actually, going, uh, we will actually go through that uh, in the next videos. So the next file now is a package.json. So this file, package.json, uh, has a very good connection with Gulp file because this uh, file package.json uh, is used for the installation of Elixir and all the dependencies that are used uh, along with that. So the next file now is phpspec.yml uh, or yaml, whatever you, you, can, you can call that. So this file, uh, this file is about the driven development tool, phpspec. However, I'm not going through that uh, in this project. I will go through that file uh, maybe in my advanced uh, uh, advanced tutorial about Laravel 5.1 and not in this one. So the next file now is phpunit.xml. Now, this is a file that I might, uh, you know, uh, open a, a few times later in the, uh, during the videos. So I'm not going to go and explain this file because we might use this later. So it is better to uh, learn about this file later. And the next file is the readme, which is, you know, not a big deal about this file. And I will talk about the last file that we have here, which is server.php. Uh, for this file, now we can go and read the, the, doc, the comments about this. So it says that this file allows us to emulate Apache's 
mode rewrite functionality from the built-in PHP web server. Now, with other words, this provides a convenient way to test a Laravel application without having installed a real web server software here. So I think that this is straightforward and uh, it is not difficult to understand. So now we'll go to my app folder. So what this app folder has and what is the what, what is the need of this app folder? So this folder has uh, everything about controllers, everything about uh, models, and everything about routes. For example, if I go and open my HTTP folder here, you can see that we have a folder uh, called controllers, and inside that folder we have a controller class. If now I go to my... Um, so we also have the routes.php file there that is used for the routing of our application. We also have the middleware uh, folder, which is something that we're going to use uh, in our uh, development. And we also have a class here called user, and this is our model that corresponds to the user stable in the database. So this file, so we are going to work a lot with this folder, app folder. So everything related to our code will be inside here. Now, the next folder, we have our bootstrap. So this folder is used in order to initialize Laravel. So this is where the starting point is of our Laravel application. It starts from this uh, folder bootstrap. So the next folder now is config. In this config folder, you have configurations for your application. Everything related to database, everything related to email, everything related even to PayPal. So if you install a dependency for PayPal, you will have a paypal.php file here, and then in that file, uh, you insert your uh, API keys and secret key. So everything corresponding uh, to configurations is inside this folder. For example, I can open one of these files, and we can open the database file. As you can see, the default database uh, that we are going to use for, uh, for the application is MySQL. And if you go down here, you can see the configurations for the MySQL database. So we have the database name, username, password, and the host. So everything related to configurations is done in this file. We also have the app.php file, and this file is used for our uh, Laravel. For example, we can change uh, uh, the, the development of our application. For example, we can set the debug mode to true. And by setting the debug, the debug mode to true, we are getting detailed errors. Uh, and when you set it to false, you are not getting any kind of error. So when the, when the website, when the application will be live, you have to set this debug mode to uh, false. Because if you have the debug mode to true, and uh, as something bad happens to your application, for example, an error occurs, then the user can see everything related to that page, the code, um, and a lot of stuff. So you do not have to uh, have this uh, to true when you have the, the, the application live. Now the next folder is a database folder. So this is where we have our uh, migrations and seed data. However, I'm not going to through uh, this uh, folder for this moment because later we will work with this folder. The next folder is public. So in this public folder, we have a couple of files. For example, we have index.php, which is the first file that the user uh, opens when the application starts. And we also have HD access. We also have the fab uh, icon, uh, which is the... Uh, so if I open my browser, you can see right here at the top, there's an icon. And this icon is the icon that you can set at this uh, folder, public, and with this name, fab icon dot icon, icon, whatever you, you can you say that. And you also have the robots.txt file, which is used, for example, from search engines like Google. And you have to go on Google and find out what this robots.txt file does. I'm not going through that because this is not a PHP, uh, Laravel 5 uh, file. I mean, this file exists in a lot of websites, no matter what the framework is. So the next folder is resources. In this folder, we have everything related to languages that, that our application might have, and of course, views. So views is the front end of our application, and we will work with this folder, resources, 
and then views for the front end application for the front end uh, view of our application. Uh, here you can also see that we have language, which is uh, for the moment we only have English, but you can also add other languages. So you can make your application uh, available to more than one language. The next folder is storage. So in this folder we have uh, the projects, uh, uh, cache, session, and log data. Um, so everything uh, related to, so if you're getting an error or something, you can see the error uh, inside the logs uh, file, folder, sorry. And uh, you can also have the cache and the, uh, the, the cache for the views and the sessions and all that stuff. This is where uh, all that uh, data exists in our storage folder. The next folder is a tests folder. So this is uh, a folder uh, used for testing, which is uh, something that, that we're not going to do uh, in, this, uh, in this project. And the last folder is the vendor. So the vendor folder is where uh, the Laravel exists, so the Laravel framework exists, and also any kind of third party that you uh, might use uh, later in your development. So, for example, we already have pre-installed Doctrine. So Doctrine is used by Laravel, and this is a vendor, as you can see, is inside our vendor uh, folder. And this is a third-party application, okay? This is like a plugin. You can, you can imagine that, like a plugin. And you can also have uh, a look at the framework of Laravel. You can uh, have a look at the source code of this. So everything, all these folders are about Laravel, and you can have immediate access to the code and you can see everything about Laravel framework. So this is uh, the last folder uh, in our application and I think I have explained most of them. So I think this is good. So anyway guys, later we will continue with the first uh, example in Laravel.